Generally speaking, memes are just fleeting jokes that rise and fall like the tides. Some of them embed themselves into the public consciousness for years and some are forgotten almost as quickly as they became popular. But sometimes memes can be a force for good and this video is about one of those times. This is about a meme that didn't quite manage to save a life but it did give a man an extra year with his wife and children and that is wonderful. This is the story of Stefan Carl and we are number one. <laughs> Stefan Carl was an Icelandic actor, singer and puppeteer, best known for his role as Robbie Rotten on the children's television series Lazy Town. It was a series created by the Icelandic athlete Magnus Shaving as a way to encourage children to engage with sports and exercise. Stefan played the villain who just wanted the town to remain lazy and he would dress in ridiculous costumes in an attempt to thwart his arch nemesis Sportacus's plans. Lazy Time was aimed at children in the kind of two to eight years of age bracket, but it quickly developed a following outside of its target demographic. The bonkers stories, larger than life characters and catchy original songs drew in older children, teenagers and adults alike. Whether it was older siblings and parents that watched it with the younger children, or adults who discovered the show through memes like, you are a pirate which became popular online, Lazy Town was beloved by all ages across the globe. When Lazy Town first aired in the UK, I was 10 years old, so just outside of the demographic. But my younger cousins were all five and under and they watched the show. And it was my aunt who actually texted my mum and said, you have to see this Lazy Town program, it's hilarious. So we put it on and in that first episode, Robbie performed the iconic masterpiece that is Master of Disguise and the two of us were in fits. And I've been obsessed with Lazy Town ever since. I even have the box set of season one on DVD and I have the soundtrack on CD. I, I really love Lazy Town. Actually, my whole family loves Lazy Town and for years, anytime we got together, there would inevitably be a full scale sing along of Cooking by the Book. We even had a pin the moustache on Sporticus at one of my cousin's birthday parties. And no, I'm not kidding. Whilst the hero of Lazy Town was Magnus Shaving superhero character Sporticus, older fans couldn't help but gravitate towards the series villain Robbie Rotten, a man who just wanted to laze around all day and couldn't be arsed with these high energy people doing backflips in the town square. It was also agreed that Robbie had the best songs in the show, with stellar tunes like Master of Disguise and Lazy Scouts in his discography. Robbie wasn't an evil villain either, he was just a misunderstood man who wanted to sleep, and really doesn't that describe anyone over the age of 25? <laughs> Robbie wasn't a bad person, and there were moments throughout the show that displayed that he really did have a heart of gold buried under those burgundy dungarees. And the man behind that rubber mask also had a heart of gold. His name was Stefan Carl Stefansson, husband of Steinan Olina Forsten daughter, and father to four children. He was bullied as a child and as an adult he founded Rainbow Children, a foundation that promotes anti-bullying and children's understanding of harmony, tolerance and understanding in the community. He took part in the Sri Chinmoy Oneness Home Peace Run, he loved animals and nature and called himself Plant Dad online. When he was cast in Lazy Town, he couldn't speak a word of English and he became fluent just so he could continue to work on the show. He supported the LGBTQ community and he toured as the Grinch on stage in a production of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. He had ADHD, OCD and Tourette syndrome and worked to support others with the same conditions. He stood up for women and he hated Donald Trump with a passion. He was a good man through and through. So in October 2016, when Stefan revealed that he'd been diagnosed with bile duct cancer, the internet was devastated. Days later, the head writer of Lazy Town, Mark Valenti, created a GoFundMe to cover Stefan's living costs while he was receiving treatment and was too ill to work. He only asked for a modest sum, 
I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was around 20,000 US dollars. Around the same time, one particular song from Lazy Town had become popular online. The song was called We Are Number One and it appeared in the 12th episode of the fourth season of the show titled Robbie's Dream Team. The popularity came from the upbeat tempo, the chaotic plot which saw Robbie and three doppelgangers trying to stop Sporticus in various unsuccessful ways, and the fun saxophone line that ran throughout the song. One particular user was the most prolific We Are Number One memer. The YouTube account Grande started creating comedic edits of the song and it soon became a trend across YouTube. Everyone was creating We Are Number One But videos. We are number one but it's opposite day. We are number one but every time they say one it gets faster. We are number one but it's in 13 different metal styles. But people weren't just creating these for fun or to get views. They were doing it to raise awareness of the GoFundMe for Stefan. Everyone was posting the link in the description box or the comments and encouraging the viewers to donate to Stefan's care. And pretty soon, the GoFundMe met its target. But the donations didn't stop. The total kept growing. It surpassed $50,000 and then $75,000. And within two months, it had hit $100,000. And when the donations were finally turned off, the fundraiser had totaled $169,670. Stefan wanted to thank the fans who had raised money for him, so he chose to stream a 20 minute live video on Facebook on the 11th of December 2016, which was then uploaded to YouTube the following day titled We Are Number One, but it's the live version with an interview. Hello? Are we live? Are we? Yoo-hoo! Hello, everybody. My name is Stefan Carl Stephenson, and I'm, uh, we're uh, in the studio in Reykjavik, Iceland, of all places. Hello to the meme world. The live was watched by over 50,000 people as it was going out. In the video, Stefan reunites the doppelgangers from We Are Number One to perform the song live in the Lazy Town studio as well as speaking to the songwriter about how the song was created. Here's a composer that I just found. <laughs> Don't throw an F on me. No. <laughs> well, throw it at him, not me. <laughs> Listening to a demo version of the track and giving an interview where he offered his heartfelt thanks to everyone who donated to his GoFundMe and shared the memes around the internet. The reason we're gathered here today is because of you guys and how uh, popular this song has become we are number one. Now look at this net that I just found. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, well, of course, we think it's amazing how popular the song has become and, uh, and how creative you guys are <laughs> with all these crazy videos. And I love every single one of them. And Stefan said that he loved the creativity and humor that people put into the video and the songwriter agreed. But then it just started getting bigger and bigger and yeah. more and more and some of them, well most of them are really well done hmm. and actually it's not about being really well done, it's, it's about the craziness of it. And yeah, I, and the humour and yeah. the creativity as well. I know. Yeah, because you know, and, and it must be great for you as a creator to see people take something you have created and take it further I and do it. some more with it. It was clear from this video that the song going viral and these crazy videos that arose from it provided some light to Stefan during the darkest time of his life, as well as helping to fund his treatment and living costs. It's, it's amazing to see how uh, the, the whole meme thing, to me the meme was a brand new thing. Yeah. I had no idea. I was literally laying in a hospital bed when my wife brought me the computer and said, oh, have you seen this mean thing? I was like, what? Oh, no, a lot of morphine, which is great if you want to really enjoy them. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and I was like, what, what is that? What? Whoa, and I was like, that's great. Is it the medicine that I'm taking or is it the creativity of it? And it really, but it's amazing to see how it travels from person to person uh, within this culture of like-minded people. And that is just something that can only happen online, really. Yes, yes. And that's the, the beauty of the internet. I totally yeah. agree. A few months later, in June 2017, the cancer metastasized. 
and had rapidly progressed to stage four, the most severe form of cancer. The outlet was bleak and Stefan's family knew that his life expectancy had just been drastically reduced. They were preparing for the worst. But as it turned out, all that fundraising had been worth it. In August 2017, just two months after he'd received that stage four diagnosis, Stefan announced that his cancer was in remission. Stefan knew to be cautiously optimistic. Cholangiocarcinoma is a particularly nasty cancer with very low survival rates. If the tumour can be fully removed, long-term survival rates are between 15% and 25% and can go even as high as 54% if the lymph nodes are unaffected. However, if the cancer cannot be surgically removed, five-year survival rate is as low as 5% and is generally 0% if the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes. For metastatic bile duct cancer, the prognosis is generally six months. While Stefan's metastases had been removed, the cancer itself was still in his system. And so Stefan took the time while his cancer was dormant to spend as much time with his family as he could and have as much fun as physically possible. And for a while, we saw a healthy, happy Stefan making the most of his cancer dormant life. He posted funny videos where he teased his wife. Stefan is a tree hand me out here on the next day, and he ended up for his cut. No. And he had a pack of scott in there, so he had a pack of scott in there. Ég lofa. Nei, alveg, þú mátt ekki fara í skottið og þú mátt ekki snerta pakkan og alls ekki velta hann við að því að þá sést hvað er í honum. Stefan. Ég lofa. Nei, alveg. Ég lofa, já, já, ég, ég gerir það ekki. A video of someone laughing so hard it stopped his show. <laughs> And videos of him playing with his cat Rufus. Mother no. Rain mother no. Things were going well. In late 2017, Stefan updated his fans with the news that the cancer had not changed or progressed and that he was well. But, un but unfortunately, that run of good fortune was not to last. In February 2018, Stefan revealed that his cancer had spread once more. He stated that while the news was difficult, it was not unexpected. He knew the reality of his disease. In the post, he went on to say, I wanted to share this news with those of you who have taken this journey with me. I'm so grateful for your affection and help. Your words of encouragement have meant the world to me. They helped lift my spirits during my dark days. Now it's time for another chapter. I will be spending the remainder of my time with my family and friends, working on a few projects that are dear to my heart, and mostly appreciating the beauty that life gives us all. We will be closing this GoFundMe page shortly, and again, I want to thank all of you who gave so generously to help me and my family. Love to you all from Robbie Rotten, the Grinch, and most of all, from Stefan. The following month, Stefan confirmed his condition was inoperable, though he was continuing chemotherapy in an attempt to prolong his life. In a heartbreaking post on Twitter, he said, It's not until they tell you you're going to die that you realise how short life is. Time is the most valuable thing in life because it never comes back. And whether you spend it in the arms of a loved one or alone in a prison cell, life is what you make of it. Dream big. Sentiments mirrored those of his wife almost a year before in a post she made about his cancer metastasizing. She said, One thing I know, however, is that life is not yesterday, not tomorrow, or sometime later. Life is now. In April, Stefan announced that he was closing his social media accounts to focus on spending the time he had left with his family. He asked the Lazy Town Memes page on Facebook to post a message on his behalf. It read, the page said, he asked me to tell you all that he will always remember you guys. He loves you and he will never let you down he's now going to focus on trying to extend his life as much as he can and enjoy life with his kids, wife and family. 
Follow, follow your dreams and know that death is nothing. Life is everything. On the 21st of August 2018, one year after his cancer went into remission, Stefan Carl Stephenson passed away at the age of only 43. His wife Stenen announced it on Facebook, stating that his remains would be scattered in secrecy in a distant ocean as per Stefan's wishes. She also, she also thanked everyone on behalf of her family for the warmth and support they offered over the years Stefan was ill and expressed sympathy for his friends and fans. After Stefan's death, several internet petitions have been started calling for a statue of him to be built in his hometown of Harfnar Fjordur. The main one currently has around 530,000 signatures. In 2019, it was announced by his manager, Cheryl Edison, that the Stefan Karl Academy and Centre for the Performing Arts would be launched in Switzerland as a memorial to his career and so that his legacy would always live on in the career he loved so dearly. And so, whilst the power of We Are Number One didn't quite manage to cure Stefan of his cancer, it did allow him an extra year with his family. His condition looked like it would claim his life in June of 2017, and yet he stayed with the living until August of 2018. It also gave him joy and light in the darkest time of his life. As he lay in his hospital bed, hooked up to drips and feeling like crap, he had a constant feed of hilarious videos and thousands of comments expressing their love and hope for him. And when you're at your lowest, maybe that's what being saved really is. In June 2017, Stefan saw an Instagram post which asked the question, can a meme save a life? And he replied, yes, it can. And who are we to argue with him? What I do know is that Stefan Carl Stephenson was a fantastic person who touched the lives of everyone who encountered him, whether it be in person, through the TV, or online. His character may have been the villain, but he was a hero, and he will always be number one.